The logical problem 503, next greater element 2, is a medium problem and goes as follow. Given a circle or integer array called nums, return the next greater number for every element in nums. And the next greater number of a number x is the first greater number to its traversing order next in the array. If it doesn't exist, return minus 1. Circular means that when you reach the end of the array, you go back to the beginning. So what we really want to do is return an array and for each position in the given input array, give the next greater element. For example, for the first element, which is 1, the next greater element on the right is 5. So we want to return 5. And for 5, because it's the greatest element in the array, we are going to return minus 1. For 1, it's 2. For 2, it's 4. For 1, it's 4. For 4, because there's nothing on its right, we need to go back to the beginning. One trick we can use when dealing with circular array is to copy the array at the end. So we can keep looking on the right and find the next greater element of 4, which is 5. There's an obvious solution, a brute force solution in big O and square. I think it's obvious because that's how a human would do it. For each element in the array, look at all the other elements on its right until we find a greater element. To do that, we need two pointers. One pointing on the first element, the second on the following element. In this example, the first pointer is pointing to 1, and the second on the value 5. 5 is greater than 1, so we can stop looking. Put 5 in the result array, and move our pointers. Now we are looking for an element greater than 5. We begin with the first element on its right, which is 1. 1 is smaller than 5, so we move our pointer to the next element. 2 is smaller than 5, so we keep going. 1 is smaller than 5. 4 is smaller than 5. Now that we have reached the end of the array, we go back to the beginning. 1 is smaller than 5. And after visiting every element of the array, we were not able to find a greater element for the value 5. So in the resulting array, we add minus 1. We can move on to the next element, which is 1. Luckily, its next greater element is the one directly on its right. Now, looking at the element 2, the value on its right is smaller, so we keep looking. 4 is greater than 2, so we store it in the result array. And you get the idea. In an interview, I think it's a good idea to talk about one easy, pretty obvious solution. But if it's brute force, it's probably not the solution they expect. So don't waste too much time talking about it. But at least it gives us a baseline to improve on. Now we can ask ourselves some questions. Can we do better? Can we do linear time? Is there duplicated work we can avoid? What information can we store? But for this problem, I think the right question to ask ourselves is, can we reformulate the problem? Previously, the problem we saw was to find the next greater element of each element. But instead, we can try to answer the question, is the current element we are looking at the next greater element of any other element? For the first element 1, the answer is no. For the second element, 5 is the next greater element of two other elements, 1 and 4. For the following, it's not the greater element of any other elements. For 2, it's greater than the one on its left. For 1, nothing. And 4, it's greater than 1 and 2. If we look at the result array, if we replace the question mark with minus 1, we solve the problem. Now that we have an intuition on how to solve this problem differently, let's try to come up with a way to do it. If we start with the first element, we don't have any information. We can put it on the side, maybe we will use it later. Then go to the next element, which is 5. Here we have more information. Because we have stored the value of the previous element on the side, we can compare it with the current value we are looking at. Because 5 is greater than 1, we just found out that 5 is the next greater element of 1. So we should be able to put 5 in our result array. But to be able to do this, we are not going to store the values of the elements, but their position. Let's start again. Instead of storing 1, we store the position 0. 
then when we go to the next element and we compare it to what's at position 0, here it's 1, and because 5 is greater than 1, we can put 5 at position 0. Because we found the solution at index 0, we don't need this information anymore. We can remove it. Now for 5, we don't know its next greater element. So we store the position 1 and move on to the next element. We compare what's at the current position with what is at position 1. But here 1 is smaller than 5. So 1 isn't the next greater element of what is at position 1. So we don't do anything. But we can store the current position, which is 2, on the side. Let's move on to the next element. Now we are at position 3. We compare it to what's at position 2, which is 1. Here the value 2 is bigger than 1, so 2 is the next greater element of 1. So we can put 2 at position 2 in the result array. And because we have found the result for what is at position 2, we don't need to store position 2 anymore, we can remove it. But we are not done with the current element. We still have some information stored on the side. We can compare the value 2 to what is at position 1. It's 5. But 2 is smaller than 5, so it's not the next greater element of any other elements. Let's store the position 3 and move on to the next element, which is 1. And once again, we compare it to what is at position 3. It's 2. 1 is less than 2, so we can stop the comparison. And we put the position 4 on the side. We can move on to the next element. Now we got 4. We compare 4 to what is at position 4. Here it's 1. 4 is greater than 1, so we put 4 at position 4 in our add prod array. We can remove the position 4 because we don't need this information anymore. Now we compare 4 to what is stored at position 3, which is 2. 4 is greater than 2, so we put 4 at position 3. And we can remove it. Now we compare it to what's at position 1, but 4 is lesser than 5. So we can stop here and store position 5 on the side. We are now running out of elements, but if we are looking at our result array, we are missing two values, which correspond to the position we still have left on the side. If we replace this by minus 1, and if the problem focused only on regular arrays, the problem would be solved. But here we care about circular array, so it's like appending the array at the end. If we do that, we can keep doing what we were doing. Once we reach index 7, we can compare it to what's at position 5, which is 4. So we can put 5 at position 5. We can then remove position 5, and we can compare the value at index 7 with the value at position 1, which is pretty much comparing the same element. So here, we are done. We solved the problem. Let's summarize. We need an array to start the result and we need to initialize it with minus 1. We need a data structure to store information on the side. And the way we store this information was by first putting an element, then a new one, then we would start comparing our current element with the newest element we stored, and every time we removed an element, we removed the last one that we stored. So it's LIFO, last in, first out. The last element we inserted is the first to be removed. The classic data structure able to do this is a stack. We are going to use a stack. The last thing we did is append the array at the end of itself. But instead of adding elements, we are just going to go through the array twice. Let's now look at a C++ implementation of this algorithm. We first need to create the output result array of the same size as the input array and initialize it with minus 1. We also need a stack. Then we want to go through each element of the input array, and because we are dealing with circular array, we we'll do it twice. Now that we are looking at an element of the input array, we want to know if it's the next greater element of a previous element we stored in the stack. So while the stack is not empty, and if the current element is greater, than the element which position is stored on top of the stack, then it means 
that the current element is the next greater element of the element on top of the stack. So we store the result in the result array and we remove the element on top of the stack. If the stack is empty or if the current element is lesser than the element on top of the stack, we stop the comparisons and we store the current position in the stack. Finally, once we have done this process for all the elements twice, we can return the result array and we are done with this problem. So if this video was helpful, consider liking it. I'm also planning on making videos about string algorithm. So if that's something you wish to see, please subscribe. It really means a lot to me. So subscribe, please. Or if there's any subject you would like me to cover, like just let me know in the comment. I can make a video on whatever you want, really. Like just tell me, I'll do it. Unless I don't want to. Thank you for watching this video and goodbye and good luck. I mean, if you're watching this video, I guess you're on this lit code grind, which, you know, I mean, come on, let's be honest, it's not really fun. But, you know, don't give up. You got this.